a community in Wallenstadt in Canton St. Gallen is testing what is billed as Switzerland's first local electricity market. About 37 households in the district of Schwemiweg are producing their own solar power and any excess that is created can be digitally traded with their neighbours just by using blockchain technology. But the real question now is, can this project really be a springboard for similar projects to follow in Switzerland? So Peter, you've actually been a resident of this district for about 40 years now. So you know the area inside out. What was your first reaction when you heard about the proposal of having solar panels and training solar power using blockchain technology? Uh, we started with our uh, solar panel project a few years ago. And I heard about the idea from uh, the, the University of Zurich and then for us it was clear that's a real good idea to figure out how it works. The, the problem is actually each Swiss citizen is thinking green or talking green mm -hmm. but they don't do something. If you log into say a portal mm -hmm. like this how does it work and how often would you log on to sell excess energy? The, the system is quite simple. One is the production and the consumption and then the prices. That's the selling price and that's the price I have to pay if I'm buying electricity. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to fix the price Mm -hmm. uh, for example, it's quite, quite easy. I go here. How do you decide how much to set it at? <laughs> I don't know. We, we had a discussion. Yeah. What's the reality? You know, you, if, if you're a, a, a consumer in Switzerland, you pay for each kilowatt an amount. So that's one part is a the energy and the other are taxes and, and uh, transportation uh, fees and, mm -hmm. and, and everything. So at the end you have to figure out a system who is somewhere between not too cheap mm -hmm. and, and not too expensive but uh, you, you have to try it. For, for me it's, it's like a black box. Mm -hmm. For me, it's interesting to know what did we produce, what could we sell, and how much had we to pay if we buying electricity. The first results of the project were released, and it seems quite positive. And being in this neighborhood and speaking to your neighbors, how have they responded? Have some been more reluctant to use this system? You know, it, it's always the same. If, if you're starting with something new, everyone is, is uh, uh, nervous to, mm -hmm. to figure out how it's running and you're changing the system five times a day. Mm -hmm. And then at, at, at the end of the day, you realize it won't work like this. You need a certain time, uh, one month, and then you will see what's going on. And, and we decided, for example, in, in our apartment house, we decided not to change every day the, the, the prices. Mm -hmm. uh, we said we will let it stay at least for one month and then we will see what's going on. We will uh, check the result and then probably we will change again. Can you imagine more people or have you heard more people within this um, community outside of this project who have expressed interest that they would one day also like to participate in such a blockchain solar energy project? It's, it's easy. In Switzerland, it's absolutely easy. Everything is going over the price. And if you have a project with chance to get some, something, a product cheaper, you, do, you try to do that. And that's, as producer, and as consumer and as consumer.
how are utility companies responding to this? Some of them might not be taking this too well. It depends how much grid you own. <laughs> I mean, we, we in Valange that we have, uh, we, we own just a little bit of the grid. Uh, I mean, the, the, the infrastructure based on this project that, that's belong to us and we will get as well uh, paid for that, for that use. But let's say when the community is uh, self, if the self consumption is high, so we don't need the, we don't need the energy come the whole way from, from the mountains to Wallenstadt. So we have less logistic and with this uh, little logistic there are the costs as well lower but if because you it stays here. But if you eliminate all the middle players yeah. and now it's just peer to peer, yeah. how are the big companies <coughs> supposed to or energy providers supposed to be dealing with that? Can it be threatened in the future, I guess? I mean, it could happen. The big dealers, they are not, they are not very happy with it, that's clear. But let's put it that way. Electricity, it's a very, very high community. It's very, very, uh, very, uh, it's, a, it's a very high commodity. And this commodity, you cannot, you, you cannot charge as much you want. And, and there's no place for a lot of dealers between. So I think it's quite interesting if you bring a technology which brings the production together really close together with the consumption and uh, you make it very high efficient, you make it automatically and the process is very high efficient and uh, at, the, at the end on, on, on such a process you, 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 you open. But it's not all good news for you because even if you do see positive results from this mm -hmm. pilot, mm -hmm. there are still regulatory hurdles. Yeah, by now the, the law is written like that. If you if you if you get if, if you take energy out of the infrastructure, you always pay the whole bill for the whole infrastructure. You pay the whole way from the centralized production uh, and until the the in, uh, in energy arrives at your household, and. Our, our idea is more to, to, to bring up the self-consumption. So you produce decentralized, you, you consume decentralized, and at, by, that, by that time you have less logistic costs. And from a very basic level, how do you in your role actually get people in the neighborhood to try and adopt such a new technology? I think that's very easy. They don't have to deal with blockchains at all. They have a web interface and they, they, they just uh, they bring on their, their, their needs, like they bring on their prices for production and consumption prices. And uh, so it works pretty much automatically. So for them, it's quite easy. How much does a blockchain project like this help to bring down costs for consumers or for these households? I think by the end of the by the end of the year it would be possible to reduce the cost. It's just it's a hard question. It always depends on how much production you have and how much consumption. But I would say roughly uh, it would be around 10 percent by the by the yearly costs, which you can bring down. Can you realistically see this? being implemented on a wider scale or will it always be limited to just smaller communities who can operate on a private network? I'm pretty sure that will happen. I mean we come out from a from a from a monopoly and it, it breaks up by part part by part every year and we end up more and more in a free market and there's a lot of space and room for innovation in free market. In Monopoly, mm -hmm. there is not much space for innovation because the laws, they are quite strict there. So quick question, um, abroad, we've seen this uh, kind of blockchain fueled energy projects in Australia, yeah. in the US, yeah. Germany as well, yeah. and in the UK. How does this project compare to those? Yeah, I mean, by us, we have the holding in it. It's not just energy. It's energy and the infrastructure and as well all the taxes. So by us, the, the whole project or the, the, the bills by end of the year, we, we, we have really, we have all in. In New York, for example, it's just the renewable energy part of the project, not the infrastructure. Walk me through the results since this pilot started in December. We had 82% uh, actually traded within the market 
or self-consumption. So that means that 82% um, of the energy that was generated on each of the solar panels um, were either self-consumed by the participants of the system or traded within the local grid, uh, within the, the local community, within the Quartierstrom project. And 18% had to be fed in back into the to the Wallenstadt um, grid and get remunerated by the by the actual um, feed-in tariff. This trading is only enabled because you're adopting blockchain technology. So just tell us exactly how is it being incorporated and what was the decision taken to actually use this and not just have a regular marketplace operating? So for once, this is a hot topic, of course. Uh, in 2016, the Brooklyn Microgrid started off with this and it just started a kind of thinking of, of going to a consumer-focused um, world of, of electricity trading and bring the actual energy trading to the end consumers and to the local producers like prosumers. Um, how it actually works is that each of each system component, may it be consumption, production, or storage, like the batteries behind me, mm -hmm. um, are represented by a device which acts on behalf of the user. The user sets their price, and the devices every 15 minutes say, okay, I consumed or produced um, this much kilowatt hours, and I will now push it to the market. The market gathers all of these orders and kind of like a stock market trading engine, um, it matches buy and sell orders into trades, into agreed amounts of units of energy within our system and an agreed price. How much are people using just normal electricity and how much is solar generated? on the average household. So this is considered the autarky of, of, of the whole system. In general, for the first two weeks of February, which was the term that we evaluated, 25% of, of the energy was completely produced and consumed um, here in, in, in the Quartierstrom uh, field test. So all 25% of the energy that was consumed was covered by their local generation. This pilot is going to be lasting for one year and so by the end of December it will wrap up and you already have a year's worth of data. What will it take for you to be deeming this a successful blockchain solar energy pilot? So there's, this is a multifaceted question in the way that it starts with the users who either accept the system or not, who want this to go on and who, who really pull for a market like this. Um, then whether they actually like accept the way of setting prices for buying and selling energy. And of course the data set itself for researchers like us, it's extremely valuable because we then can then do our forecast scenarios based on, on real data and this is really rare. Um, on the other hand, for the blockchain part, um, the evaluation of necessary infrastructure is incredibly inc really valuable to us because we can think of scenarios where we, we can then decide, is this technology that we sought out for, for the Quartierstrom project viable for another kind of Quartier, for mm -hmm. another kind of area, and um, then deem, okay, we could then move this project onto another, to another part. The Swiss Federal Office has said that even if the pilot does turn out to be feasible, there are still some things to consider, like the regulatory framework. The pilot is expected to wrap up in December of this year, but until then, Trading solar energy on the blockchain is just going to be a regular pastime for residents of Schwemiweg.